what in the world is an orbital? We hear about it, we see it uh, drawn, it's, we have an illustration, we have an image of the orbital, okay? And it turns out that uh, uh, it doesn't coincide with, <laughs> with, with what they're explaining. And they cannot justify that, that orbital. There you see the atomic orbitals, okay? And you can see uh, they're all balloons. And you wonder what all those balloons are, okay? We're gonna find out that those are regions in which you can find the electron beads. So these are regions, these are balloons, but you don't see them in the uh, standard model. We don't see this, these balloons in there and say, well, this material is made out of, I don't know, whatever, uh, and they call it this or that. No, these are supposedly regions. That's where they're supposed to be, regions where you can find the electron bead. Okay, so that's the overall notion of this thing called an orbital. Okay, and so here you have the uh, proton and the neutron. Okay, one has two up quarks and one down quark. The other one has two down quarks and one up quark. Those are those uh, red and blue things inside that, that sphere. Why did they draw them with that sphere around it? Why didn't they draw it, for example, like this? Wasn't it supposed to be like this? Because what is that sphere? You know, are they putting that in by hand? I mean, let's take all that stuff out. Let's just leave the sphere now. There we have the sphere. What is that sphere that encapsulates the uh, proton and the neutron? And again, you won't find it anywhere, identified anywhere in uh, quantum dome. You'll never find what this is. So they put it in by hand, they just make believe. Why? Because they want to show that the um, quarks do not leave the uh, proton or the neutron. They don't just spontaneously fly away. And so if, you know, if they're encapsulated in this sphere, then people understand just by looking and say, well, I see why the quarks don't fly away. Not only are they bound together by these gluon springs, but on top of that, they have all this sphere within which they're trapped they're in prison okay they can't leave this spherical prison but they never identified that spherical prison that's the issue what material what is that just name it give me a name for it and they call the whole thing the proton or the neutron well we have a very similar situation with the orbital in fact it's almost identical one is an analogy for the other okay and here you see it okay here we have uh these balloons and all these balloons that you'll see out there these are the orbitals. And you say, okay, what am I staring at? What are these balloons? In fact, uh, in uh, regular chemistry class and physics class in college, they simulate them with balloons, with actual balloons. They say, look, imagine this balloon like this, this balloon like that, and they play around with the balloons. The teachers, the, the instructors, they, they play around with the balloons to show you how the atom is constructed. They never use you know, the little particles flying around. They can't do that you know, because they can't simulate like the hydrogen atom with a proton in the center and the little uh, electron bead flying around unless they somehow tie that electron to the proton. They could do it if they had a little string or something, but without that string, they can't simulate the electron going around the proton. And, but here, uh, what you're seeing, all these balloons, uh, they're supposedly the uh, orbitals or energy levels. And yeah, they do simulate them with balloons. And that's exactly how you see them there. Okay, so what are orbitals? Someone asks you, they're balloons, okay? Every time you think of orbital, you have to think of balloon. Okay, that's what, that's what an orbital is. Okay, so here uh, you see the hydrogen balloon on the top, okay? And you see that electron, blue electron bead rolling around the red center, which is uh, the nucleon, in this case is the proton. There is no, um, th there's no neutron in the ordinary hydrogen, right? You gotta go to deuterium, it's got one neutron, tritium has two neutrons. But uh, the standard hydrogen has no neutron, so it's just a proton and an electron bead going around. But as you can see, the electron bead is not tied by any string or anything to the center ball. And so the question is, what is that blue sphere within which the electron is trapped? What they explain, what they always, you know, whenever they have to use, for example, uh, the uh, hydrogen atom, to explain something, for example, like electricity, even though you can't do it with uh, hydrogen, but just for the sake of simplicity, let's assume you do electricity with hydrogen atom. What's moving, according to them, is one electron from atom to atom. And you can understand that if the electron bead is just rolling around the nucleus and nothing is tying it to the, uh, hydro to the nucleus. You can imagine that electron bead just going out for whatever reason, whatever pushed it out or whatever pulled it out, and going from atom to atom. But the question is, that's the atom that they explain, that's the one they use for electricity, that's the one they use for um, ionization. 
But then when you ask them, okay, so what does the uh, atom really look like? Well, they say it looks more like a cloud. And what they draw is that um, orbital, that energy level, the blue one, and it's nowhere to be found. What is an energy level? Well, it's a region within which you can find the electron bead. That's all it is. If it's a region, it's a concept. I'm talking about, is that a membrane? Are we staring at a membrane or some kind of sphere that a solid that the electron for some reason cannot escape? What is that blue thing? And you won't find an answer to that question anywhere because they immediately they talk about math. They start talking to you about abstractions. They say, well, uh, you got to study math in order to understand what that is. No, no, I need, if you're going to draw it, if you're going to illustrate it, you got to name it. And if you're going to say that it's a concept called energy level or orbital, which is just a bunch of orbits of an electron bead, which means that within that region you can find the electron bead, a region is not a physical object. You can't say a region, knock my wall down. The word region cannot be used as a physical object. And that's what that is, just a region. That for some reason the electron cannot escape. And then, uh, you know, the electron doesn't fall to the nucleus either. So there's something preventing the electron from falling to the red ball. And so it's all screwed up. <laughs> the whole picture is screwed up. Okay. But that's how the orbital is conceptualized as some kind of sphere that surrounds the proton and the electron bead is uh, trapped within that sphere. 